Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eric Masowski, and in this tutorial we're just going to take a look at a couple of the primitives that come with 3D Studio Max. Now, primitives are, you know, the building blocks for a lot of objects that you may want to create. And you can find the, most of the primitives underneath create, and then geometry. So at the beginning here, you see that we have standard primitives, and we see the usual suspects right over here. So box, sphere, cylinder, cone, and so on. So let's start with sphere. So we enter sphere creation mode just by left clicking on it. You can see that it turns orange. <coughs> now, now that we're in this mode, if we go over to, say, our top viewport, click and drag, as we're dragging our mouse, we're defining the radius of the sphere. When we're happy with the radius, just release the left mouse button. Now you'll notice that even after I've created my sphere, I'm still in sphere creation mode. So every time I click and drag, I'll end up creating an additional sphere. Now, there are two ways that you can get out of your sphere creation mode, or two common ways. One is to hit escape on the keyboard. And the other is to right click in your active viewport. And so now you can see I have the default behavior again. Okay, so let's select our sphere and delete it. This time let's create a box. Now a box has actually two steps instead of one, like the sphere. So with the box, click and drag to define the base. So again in our top viewport, we're clicking and dragging. Then when we're happy with it, release the left mouse button and drag the mouse up and down. Now you're defining the height of the box. When you're happy with the height, left click. Now, one thing that's pretty convenient in Max is that you can often cancel an operation right in the middle of doing it. So, for example, here I am clicking and dragging. I release the left mouse button, start defining the height, and I realize that this base isn't anything near what I want. Um, I want something much, you know, more, much closer to my end goal. So instead of, you know, finishing this whole process, selecting this object, and then deleting it, what I can do is, while I'm still creating it, I can just right click, and it cancels the operation. Now if we go to something with a single operation, like Sphere, as you're clicking and dragging with the left mouse button, you can still right click and it will cancel the operation you're doing. Now this holds true for a lot of things, such as modifying parameters over here on the right hand side. So as I click and drag, I can scale it up, but then just right click to cancel the operation. So it's very helpful to just quickly see something and then revert to where you were. It also works with the move tool. You can move an object to the side, maybe to reveal an additional object, then just right click to get back to where you to where the object was. Okay, now something else you may have noticed is right after I moved my object, I lost all the settings over here on the right hand side. I didn't actually lose them, they just moved. They moved over to the Modify panel. So if you need to get back to the radius that you set, or how detailed your object is, or any of the other properties that come with a certain primitive, you can get access to them back over in the Modify panel. Okay, so let's just take a really quick tour of some of the different primitives. And I encourage you to just play with these. Um, that's the best method for learning all the different primitives that you can create. So we have 
the infamous teapot. You have pyramids. And beyond this basic list, we can click on this drop down list to expose some of the other primitives that we have. For example, underneath extended primitives, we have one of my favorites, the Taurus knot, which is just a very cool shape, which, you know, you have. You can change the parameters to whatever you need and get some really unique shapes to it. And other things like hedras, prisms, C blocks, and so on. Uh, ring wave is also pretty cool if you're doing shock waves and things of that nature. Now, additionally, we're going to skip compound objects for now because it's a fairly more complex topic, and we'll get back to it. Same with particle systems, patch grids, nerve surfaces. Then we have down here doors. So we have a couple different types of doors that we can create fairly easily in 3D Studio Max. The main thing to keep in mind when using the doors or windows uh, creation methods is to pay special attention to the creation method being specified. So here we have width, depth, and height. So that's the order that we're going to be creating this. So if we switch to our perspective view, just make it a little bit bigger with the maximize button. We first click and drag to define the width of the door, release the left mouse button, drag a little bit to define the depth of the door, left click, and then drag again to define the height of the door. And so there we go. We have a door here, and we now have some nice little sliders for opening the door. You can also change such things as the number of panels, horizontal or vertical, how thick they are, and so on. And it's really nice because each of these components automatically have their own material slot assigned to them. So it's really easy to texturize any of these components, the individual panels or the frame itself. Okay. So windows behave in much the same way. So we'll just go with awning, width, depth, height. Then you have AEC extended, and this is uh, some, a few architecturally focused um, options. So you have such things as trees. There's only a few trees that come with Max, and let's zoom way out. So there you go. Got a nice tree, got a nice scotch pine, and so on. Rail is also pretty neat, or a wall is pretty neat as well. This is a quick way to build walls in your scene. So you click once to define a point, and then you just keep on clicking to put down anchor points. And so you can work your way roughly back. Weld point, yep, you can keep going if you want, and just right click when you're done. And so it created a nice wall set up here very, very quickly. If we take a really close look at this corner, you can see it did a pretty decent job of making a nice clean edge as well. So, you know, if you have the need for walls, it's a really great option, uh, a very quick option that you can then later modify if you need to. Okay, there's also stairs. So, here we go. You know, you can put in some uh, stringers, some railings. You can specify the type, the height of each step, the width of each step, all these wonderful details. So I encourage you to just play around with the majority of uh, the different primitives that are available to you. Just to show you a couple things that can be done with the primitives. You 
You can make an old lady. Or you can even make kind of like a squirrel character. You can make architectural pieces, mechanical, all that stuff. You can get very far with the primitives. And so I encourage you to play around with it and try to create a little scene with them. Just a, you know, a bunch of intersecting parts. So intersecting spheres and so on. Okay. All right. So that'll do it for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or post on the forums. Thank you.